woman sticks to her guns at a car dealership saying, no, no, no. Broadcasting live from Studio X in the great country of Texas, I'm Scott Allen Turner on a mad mission to help you get financial independence, ultimate happiness, and a life full of awesome experiences. If you get a question like answered on the show, please visit GoAskScott.com. Diane asked us, how should you shop for a pre-owned car? Or as I still call them, used. In a bold prediction using my crystal ball, someday the auto industry will find a fancier word so we won't think of them as used cars, like gently loved cars. Listen to the story out of the Wall Street Journal. Brenda Christensen is considering buying her next car online after a frustrating dealership visit. She showed up at a Kia store in Melbourne, Florida, with a pre-approval letter letter from her lender for a Sedona minivan, only to have the general manager pressure her to get financing through the dealership. After the manager finally relented, Miss Christensen, age 56, was stuck in the finance office for hours, she said. Quote, they delayed the paperwork and tried to push a lifetime transmission warranty. I was just like, no, no, no. I finally understood after a couple of hours. Oh, I think they finally understood after a couple of hours I wasn't going to budge. Buying a car stresses people out because it's a big decision and big money. Now, entire industries exist to take away the hassle, but they take away your money right along with it. Years ago, when I was single, I sold my car to get rid of the payment. I had cash to buy a truck. I went to CarMax, paid about seven grand with no haggling. That's what CarMax, AutoNation, and Carvana are known for. A couple days later, I was looking through AutoTrader and found a truck with half as many miles, around 35,000 versus 60,000, for $500 less. That is a huge difference in miles and some coin, too. CarMax, they had a seven-day, no-question-asked policy if you want to return it, so I brought it back. Got my money back. No hassles. So that was cool. Then I went out and bought that other truck for 6300 bucks. I think I negotiated a couple hundred bucks, bucks off of it. My experience is a lesson for you. Shop, shop, shop around. Most people do a little research, end up on the car lot on a Saturday, and get the fever. The fever! The new car fever. Saturday night, they are posting to Facebook their new car. Look what I'm driving. Look, I've arrived. Look what a great deal I got on a trade-in. And I've done that, so I get it. That was the story of my first new car. It was a Jeep. But realize what people who haven't found the Scott Allen Turner Show yet don't know is, look what the bank owns. I overpaid on financing. This extended warranty is a waste of money. And they didn't even give me one of those smelly tree things to hang on the rear view mirror as a bonus. Earl Stewart, he's an owner of a Toyota dealership. He's quoted as saying, where dealers really keep their head up is boosting interest rates from the bank and throwing in products like extended warranties. It's from a dealer saying this. Here's what can happen. Person gets into the finance department. They've got, they've got the fever, ready to buy, already committed hours to this buying process. So their brain is not going to let them walk away. They're too invested. The finance person says, oh, you've got good credit, you've got bad credit, whatever. The dealer will mark up the interest rate by up to 2%. And given today's 72-month average term to pay back those loans, that is a Disney vacation. Someone just gave up in interest payments. Not good. Not good. Car finance departments are not friends of your wallet. Car finance departments are not friends of your paycheck. And car finance departments are not friends of your future. I want you to remember that. Car finance departments have one goal. Get people who haven't learned what we teach on the Scott Allen Turner Show into a car for the most amount of profit possible. Not anti-profit, just anti-wasting money. Let me congratulate you for being the best and the brightest when it comes to your car buying skills. Here's the list. Figure out your needs first. What do you need in a car? And then what do you want? What are some extras you might like? Visit the car lots on Sundays when no one is there and look around. No salespeople 
No pressure. Okay, you can't take a test drive, but you can look. Then go rent the car for 25 bucks or $50 for the day. Drive it around or find a friend who's got one. Drive theirs. Get your financing in place first from a local bank, credit union, or online. That alone is going to save you thousands of dollars. Once you find a car, do all the negotiating with the dealer through email. Get the walkaway price in writing. That's what's called walkaway price. Then go buy the car and stand firm. Your greatest superpower is your walkaway power. Your greatest superpower is your walkaway power. Use it. Use it or lose it. And by it, I mean your hard-earned money. If you do not use your walkaway power, you will lose money. When my mother-in-law was shopping for her car a couple years ago, we did it a little different because she was buying in, in cash. She knew what she wanted, but I was the good son-in-law because I'm the good son-in-law. We sat at the salesperson's table after the test drive. Mother-in-law had a budget. The dealer would not come down enough on the price. Mother-in-law stuck to the budget. That's good. So we left. And this was two hours into the process. And then, lo, a couple hours later, she gets a text from the salesperson. Suddenly, the car is $1,000 less. Walking away saved $1,000. Always use your walkaway power. You should walk away and go get a bite to eat. You'll clear your head. You'll get away from that stress. The fever will come down. More importantly for you, you'll turn the tables. The dealer is going to have the stress now because they are worried about losing that sale. They have also already committed a couple hours of their time. And you walk away to go get dinner, think about it, they got nothing to show for it. They don't like that. If you want to avoid what Miss Christensen experienced, being in the box for two hours, getting worn down by the finance department, set a time limit for yourself. One hour, max. Then, get up and leave. If you're like me, you're probably a bit impatient anyways, and use that power. I can't stand having my time wasted. I'd get up and go. I'd grab a sticky note. Here's my cell phone number, salesperson. Call me when you get the paperwork worked out, ready to sign it, ready to deal, ready to do business. I'll be at Five Guys, Subway, wherever, getting a deal. Remember this. You can find that car anytime, somewhere later on. Yeah, it might not have the tinted windows, the spinners on the hubcaps. You can add those later. That may not be the only town around that's got what you need, but you can walk away and another one is eventually going to show up. You follow those steps, you will get the car you want with the features you need at the best price with the least amount of stress. More money in your pocket. Think about that. You're going to save thousands. Go to Disney with that money. Somebody's going to be going to Disney. Is it going to be you, your family, or the salesperson, owner of the dealership? You know who it should be. You got that right. You. You're listening to the Scott Allen Turner Show. Be right back. <laughs> 